Hi everyone, welcome back to my subscribers. Thank you very much for subscribing. And for those of you who haven't subscribed yet, this would be a great time to hit the pause button, hit the subscribe button. And while you're there, if you're feeling extra generous, especially if you find these videos useful, find that little thanks button. If, you know, uh, I appreciate that. Okay, now jumping into today's topic of automating Google search to Excel. This is a piece of code I've written a couple of years ago, benefited tremendously for, from this, how I often perform uh, Google Scholar search for obvious reasons, you know, I do a lot of research in terms of what's being published out there on various topics, but I always don't have time to follow up. So I wanna actually uh, capture all of those into an Excel document along with the links to the original paper. So I can go back and click on the links and do my study at leisure, lying down in the sofa or whatever, right? So if you're one of those, you may find this to be uh, useful. So let's go ahead and jump into, uh, into the actual part, starting with just a quick look at Google Scholar. I'm pretty sure most of you know what it is. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but I'm gonna show you how we typically perform a search and then jump into the code to show you how uh, that can be automated. And uh, of course, uh, Google Scholar, you go to scholar.google.com, you find all these published papers right here, and you can search based on various keywords, including the author name or whatever keyword that you would like to use, just like Google search, right? But uh, let us uh, uh, let me show you a couple of ways. As you see, these are the searches I just performed, and this is my name, and I put those in quotations because I want the name to be all together. I don't, otherwise, if I don't put the quotations, it's gonna search for Srinivas and it's gonna search for Bhati Prolu, and these two are not, kind of common, not unique to me, right? So I want something unique to me, so I put this in the, in the quotation, so it's gonna show me uh, everything related to uh, this specific keyword as it is. So as you see, the first result it shows is something I published in 2024 this year. Uh, well, not I published, I'm part of this, this large group you know, who published this. And then this one is something I published back in 2002. This was my PhD uh, thesis and uh, dissertation right there. And uh, of course you can sort these by year. In this case, we are not sorting them at all, right? And this is something I published a couple of years ago. This is something I published last month, like few weeks ago on this. Uh, and I did a video on this topic. Okay, you got the point. And Typically, uh, of course, but per page, it shows about 10, I think exactly 10 uh, results, and then you go to the next page and so on. After the first three pages, probably it's irrelevant anyway. So this is the typical search, and if you want to search for multiple keywords, for example, Srinivas Patipolu or Digital Srini, because when I publish something, I don't use the term Digital Srini, but thankfully, some of my viewers actually acknowledge me or you know, uh, use my code and uh, basically, you know, add reference to this or citation to that, uh, you know, my GitHub repository. So I love to follow those. So this is another one that uh, a keyword that I choose to search for here. But in your case, it could be, I don't know, uh, brain and neurons and neuroscience, whatever. You can actually combine different keywords in your case. I'm just showing you a simple example. Okay, how do we do these searches uh, via Python and then actually save it to Excel? It's very straightforward, actually. It involves web scraping, like basically doing this search and actually getting the results and getting the, getting the author's names and also this information, like right there and saving it into Excel because I want every information. I don't want to just store like title because titles can be misleading. Sometimes this text can be very useful. Okay, now let's jump into our code and where is my IDE? There you go. I am going to use Beautiful Soup. Uh, as you can imagine, I mentioned web scraping, so that's what I'm gonna use. Pandas to capture them into a data frame. Time obviously is important, uh, date time. Uh, and uh, URL because we are actually, after all, using a URL to access the results. And uh, regular expression is something we need for a couple of aspects. So these are uh, the top, let's go ahead and run these actually. Uh, actually, let's run the entire code uh, later on. Uh, but let's go through it uh, almost line by line. Okay, when I started running this, it's actually throwing a few of these SSL verification warnings, and I don't care about warning as long as the code works, so I added this line up here, but uh, there are a few things that we want to extract from, from the search results, right? So one of those is DOI, 
yeah, the document index that I want to extract. And the DOI typically has a pattern where it starts with 10, followed by four to nine digits, and then a slash and so on. And uh, I took the DOI basically, and I asked, uh, I asked, uh, I mean, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not an expert at regular expression. So to get to this, I had to take ChatGPT's help and nothing, no shame there, because if you don't know something, go ask an expert. And the expert that I have at my disposal or had at my disposal was this ChatGPT. So it's basically, hey, uh, how do I, uh, give me a regular expression for DOI, right? So this is basically, in fact, it did not give this in the first try. It kind of failed a couple of times and I had to come back and forth. So uh, I'm pretty sure someday you'll get an answer within first question, but you may have to go back and forth. Anyway, so this is the regular expression. As you can see, it starts with a 10 and then four to nine characters, uh, digits, and then followed by a slash and so on. It makes sense once you know the answer. <laughs> okay, the next thing is extracting the methods like the text and in the text, Basically, look at the keywords. All I'm saying is uh, look at the keywords, uh, especially it says using and a method and approach or technique or protocol. So if any of these, then go ahead and extract that text is what this is doing right there. And then the field property, right? So these are all different columns that I'm adding, like DOI, method, field, uh, you know, the field and abstract and so on. Uh, that's why I wanted to get relevant text. So here I want to add Basically, hey, what field is this from? You know, so I can quickly look through those. And uh, of course, you can add an extensive list. In fact, I didn't, I lumped everything into AI right there, but the field can be biology, medicine, materials, microscopy. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you uh, are focused on one of these fields. But in my case, since I work with different groups, you know, or uh, different applications, it's a bit more diverse. That's the best part of what I love doing every day, right? Different things, different type of challenges that you get to address all using AI or Python coding. Okay, so if these keywords exist, then I'm gonna tag them as microscopy, for example. If microstructure or nanostructure or alloy or grain size, typically those fall into materials and I just wanna tag them accordingly in the Excel sheet when I export it. That's all that part is doing. And then I wanna format the search query in the right form, yeah? So basically if there are two separate words, just add an R to it. That's, that's what I'm doing right there. And uh, so this is just bookkeeping right there, yeah? And then also for the query itself, uh, you wanna put a start year and the end year, right? So I wanna say, show me all the results from 2018 to 2024. That is something we are going to add to our query. To, uh, so if I say Srinivas Bhattiprolu, then it's going to add these to the URL, yeah? So if I go back, in fact, to the URL, you can see how this is structured up here. You see Srinivas Bhattiprolu uh, or, so Google, Google Scholar does that automatically for you. That's why I wanna formulate this URL. We're not gonna open the page and then type this and then click on this. So we're not gonna do, you know, uh, uh, screen recording type of uh, actions here. We're just typing the URL and looking at the results. In fact, if I just do since 2024, you can see how the URL changes where uh, it says like year and you can actually put custom range. And that's exactly what I'm referring to here when we say custom range. You put start year and then you put the end year. Okay, and basically, uh, this part is the searching the scholar and uh, uh, it takes the keywords, it takes your start year, end year, and how many pages you wanna search. Usually after the first three pages, uh, the results can be a bit more random, unrelatable. So I just take first three, year, three, in fact, first page most of the time, maybe the second page. And in this example, I'm showing you three. Okay, so uh, one thing you need to realize is uh, in, uh, Google Scholar or whatever web page, when they realize that, hey, someone is doing something in an automated way, then it shuts you off. It shuts that uh, you know, off and says, hey, you can't do this. So you need to be mindful of that and, uh, and you need to respect that because obviously you don't wanna suck everything, all the resources you know, using automated stuff. So you need to do uh, the, this action like a human would normally do. What would a human do? Okay, you search and then you get the results, you go through the results, you have some time elapsed in between and then you go to the next page and so on. So that's basically what I'm trying to do here, okay. So, so for each of these pages, go ahead and do the following thing. Yeah, here is your URL. 
and you have to put the start index and you have to put this is where you put the query and that's how it goes there and also the header you know kind of what uh, what browser are you using is something right so this is what we are trying to say and then if the page is greater than zero which means if it's not the first page but then the second page or third page and so on then go ahead and add some delay between 20 to 40 seconds so it's kind of like okay that's what you do right when you go from one page to the other so i put random why not just 30 because i don't want to i want to simulate a real human behavior that's why we are doing that and the rest of it is uh, i think self-explanatory basically and I, I had to put a few debug prints because it wasn't working fine I should have commented that out, but I'm leaving it in, in case things don't work for you. Here are the print comments. If you, oh, oh, by the way, the, call, the link to the code is in the description as regular subscribers know. And uh, extract the basic information. So we already have, uh, you know, the, the functions to extract uh, DOI and other parts, but then the title and author, title is typically in H3 html and uh and, and author and abstract are available here again this is something you may have to play uh, this has been working for the last one two years so i don't see why it should not but you never know when things change this is where you can actually change um i think that's that's pretty much it everything else is just capturing it into you know getting it into the right data frame and adding your exceptions in case things don't work you don't want just the error to be showing up on your screen and nothing happens obviously exceptions are important uh, and uh, that's it now here we are handling i'm going to go ahead and get 2018 to 2025 uh, and uh, let's check the first three number of pages and the three keywords that i'm i mean i'm testing three pages for each of these keywords right so first it does digital screening and youtube and then my own name and then my name and zeiss because i work at zeiss so i may have published something working for zeiss right so all of these is going to capture everything related to me uh, and uh, between 2018 to 2025 and for each of these searches three pages so we should get 30 times 390 you know uh, if there are three pages in some of these maybe the last keyword doesn't have three pages if there are three pages you'll see those I think that's pretty much it. Everything else is uh, uh, capturing them into a pandas data frame and then converting the data frame into uh, Excel. So let's go ahead and run this. I'll pause the video, but you can see on the screen that it's doing these searches. It's finding something, it's searching, and it's waiting 20.8 seconds before the next page. Remember, between 20 to 40 seconds, it's going to do that. And then it's going to continue the next page and then after that and then moves on to the next search and so on so i'll let me pause the video for now and continue after all of this is done so you can see how the output excel file looks like okay so okay so it's finally done and as you can see that's the last result on the screen and it should have saved it in an excel file i can see it on my other screen let me go ahead and open it and there you go. So here is the final result. So basically, I don't know how many did we get, uh, around 54. Why 54 and not 90? Because a couple of keywords, like especially when you combine and narrow the search, you won't see uh, results for like three pages or something, right? So most of the time I probably had like one and a half page or something of results uh, for a couple of those keywords. So either way, so here is uh, basically enabling global image data sharing and life sciences. This was the first result that we saw earlier, right? So this is the one from 2024. And by the way, I'm sorting based on year when I'm saving them into, uh, into this uh, Excel. And this is the journal and what field is it? It's biology. Uh, again, this is, this is based on our keywords that we defined. And here apparently it didn't find any of the keywords, so it didn't know what to do with it. So I don't even know what this is. Basically, this is not even in English. So uh, some someone who probably was kind enough to kind of uh, cite my work. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so this is something I was directly involved with. So obviously right there. And the link, if I want to read more about it, just click on the link. And uh, uh, this is, this isn't this much easier than just going through Google Scholar every time, right? So there you go. So this is uh, something we published uh, a while ago. Uh, well, actually, in 2024, uh, okay? <laughs> feels like a while ago. Uh, July feels like a while ago, but this is from, yeah, the microscopy and microanalysis where we kind of published this 
uh, these results uh, or uh, an educational piece, let me put it that way. Okay, so I really hope you found this to be useful. Again, I'm pretty sure you tuned to this uh, probably to get access to the code, which is the link is down below under uh, the description. Let's meet in the next tutorial talking about a different topic. Thank you again. Please do subscribe.